So a moment ago we went through these um, four steps, but you saw there were a lot of sub-steps and information. And ultimately we get a WordPress site. Um, I had asked before the break, now this will be for practice because when we do it together it's so easy and then you try to do it at home and it's not the same. So I'm trying to recreate here an example of what uh, could happen then when you do this, when you do this at home. Um, I, I asked you, let's close your windows, your web browser windows. I still have MAMP running. That's one of the important things that when, when this doesn't work for people at home, one of the main things is that you don't have your MAMP running. So make sure that MAMP is still running itself. OK, it's, it's on. But for the full practice, I closed all of my web browsers. And for practice, I want to get back into, into WordPress. Now, by default, um, I was in um, I was in Edge, I believe. So Microsoft Edge, I believe that was the default one. Well, I'm going to switch over to a different one. You can go to Opera, Firefox, Chrome. I'm going to switch to Chrome. I'm going to go to a different web browser than the one I had a moment ago. If you didn't notice which one it was, just, just pick one. Um, but now I'm going to go to a completely different browser to to show you that when we do it together, I follow a specific process, yes, and everyone gets there. But when you're doing it yourself, you might have to think a little bit outside the box. I had mentioned in my notes several times that we need to memorize a few addresses here. So first, if we go to the address, http colon slash slash localhost. Now without the S, maybe we're used to HTTPS now. S is for security. Many websites nowadays have a secure connection, HTTPS. But with MAMP, uh, we don't. We have plain old HTTP without security. So when I type HTTP and then localhost, it just takes me to the, OK, yeah, cool. You've got MAMP, the basic MAMP set up. And just a quick little message like that. Does anyone remember where's like the, the main web start page? Anyone the address? Anyone remember that address? That's right, MAMP, and then slash if you want. That's the uh, that's the main um, web start page. This like sort of like yeah, it's running screen is just localhost. But where you actually can do stuff is localhost slash MAMP. I think it's got to be all caps. Maybe let me put it lowercase. If it's lowercase, it says not found. So I guess it's got to be uppercase. Yeah. Okay. So it has to be uppercase. Apparently, I just confirmed it. Sometimes case doesn't matter, but uh, apparently here it does. OK, well, this is nothing new. We've seen this, but we've seen this before in terms of clicking on the MAMP app and then web start page. Another way to get to the screen, if you ever need it, is localhost slash MAMP, all caps. If I wanted to get into the PHP My Admin screen, obviously I have the button there. But if maybe just even faster, maybe I've got a blank empty screen like that. Maybe I'm not at the web start page on a blank screen. That's the other one to memorize, HTTP colon slash slash local host slash PHP my admin. You don't need to do too much at PHP my admin. Um, did I spell that right? Local host PHP my admin. Hmm. What am I missing there? You don't have to do too much at... Um, At PHP my admin, oh, okay. I guess PHP my admin. Oh, actually, it's a little different. Oh, wait. Okay, uh, capitalization. That's what was the problem. So the capitalization matters. PHP lowercase my capital M and then admin capital A. Okay, that's annoying. Um, but localhost PHP my admin. Uh, if I ever want to get to it directly that way as well, in case I need to edit databases. Now, I created my database in a different web browser, but I still see my database kitty cat. That's normal. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Localhost is accessible from every web browser on your computer. As long as you've got MAMP running at that moment, any web browser that you want to use will be able to access the features of localhost, if you spell it right. And I've got my database that already existed there, kitty cat. When we first created it, it was empty. 
But now that we've started to use it, now it's got all of this stuff in it. It has all of these like subsections of data. Just out of curiosity, you can't really do anything here. You shouldn't really do anything here. You know, you don't want to you don't want to shred your work with these icons and stuff. But there's stuff there in the database that was empty a moment ago. And now there's actual content. Okay. Nice. Um, I want to see my website just like my visitors. I want them to visit my website as if they were visiting my site. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash the name of my site. The name of the folder of my site, which is my site. When you do this at home and if you call it something else, or if you just take the unzipped WordPress folder as is, then that should be WordPress. If you never change the name of the folder, it's WordPress. But we changed it to my site. And I see here the default. Hello world. Welcome to WordPress, Victor's Bakery. This is what people see. The default really, really boring theme. We'll talk about what themes are, of course. But there's my website. Not very much to look at, but Again, behind the scenes, it's still all just HTML, really advanced HTML. Even on our basic site here, it's 130 lines. Uh, we talked about that trick before, right? If you, on your web browser, you press Control U, it'll pull up your HTML. So some of that looks familiar. I see head, I see link for CSS or whatever. There's some JavaScript going on here, plus a lot of HTML classes and IDs and such. So this is still all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's just that the WordPress software shields me from it. And lastly, to actually get back to the dashboard, to the admin screen, it's whatever your site is, slash wp-admin. Let's go to that. And let's log in with the admin and password that you made. I wasn't looking over your shoulder. I don't remember what you typed. If you don't remember, I can't help you. You typed it. You'll have to get our help to recreate the site, and that'll be good practice. And again, I don't think this lost password thing really works because it's not uh, fully set up on the real internet. So don't be surprised if that doesn't work. Uh, but anyway, log in with your uh, admin and password. And my example was that I used username admin and password password which were terrible but let's it, they they work so i'm signing into the site and so this is our dashboard with a bunch of menu items on the left which will learn every single screen as the course goes on the majority of what this class will be is working with basic, intermediate, and advanced concepts in WordPress. We'll cover what all of those screens are, of course. We don't need to know them all just yet for this first week's assignment. I'll point out a few things. But for our notes over here, after we've got run WordPress installation, we actually have one more step then. Use WordPress. And that's what's going to take us several weeks. It's a what you see is what you get. Have you heard of this? Have you heard of? It? Have you ever seen this term before? Any of you, right here? Have any of you? Does, do any of you know how to pronounce it? It stands for what you see is what you get, and it's often pronounced WYSIWYG. It's what you see is what you get. This is a WYSIWYG editor. It's a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. I create a page in WordPress and it's a page compared to HTML it's not what you see is what you get with HTML you have to write head tag and h1 and p and all of that and it doesn't look like a web page until you run it whereas WordPress is I drop a button right here and that's exactly where it'll show up on my on, on the on the visitors side of things so WYSIWYG editor what you see is what you get WordPress is a WYSIWYG editor it uh, shields you from HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It creates HTML, 
CSS and JavaScript code behind the scenes. And it um, does let you pull back the curtain and edit the raw code if you want. And I'll show you how to do that, of course. Um, or it can let you get uh, directly to the code if you want. Sometimes it's a lot faster to write one quick line of the HTML instead of trying to find where's that screen again? It's under this screen, under this tab, under here. Because WordPress on the left menu, there's all of those menu items on the left, and as you create a more advanced WordPress site, you have even more left menu items. And you have sub items in some of those menu items. And sometimes, like, where did that menu go where I needed to change my footer? Sometimes it just go to the the main code editor, which I'll show you where that's at, and just edit it directly. Sometimes that's faster. All that we see and do with WordPress is stored in the database. Ultimately, everything that we do, that's why we needed that database early on. We needed a place for our site details to be saved at in a database, the one we call Kitty Cat. And now our site, our WordPress site, is functional. Here's a few terms to, to understand. Uh, front end, back end. So front end also what, we'll say what they see. Back end what you see. Or front end um, for your visitors or customers, back end for you, for the admins, for you the admin, for you that logs in to make changes, add products, respond to people's comments to administer the site, front end, back end. And I often shorthand it as the dashboard. And up here, the main site. We have these two views of our website. Back end, front end, dashboard, main site. And we need to know how to switch between them. Um, because looking at things as the administrator isn't exactly as how regular people will see it. And that's easy to do. Do you see at the top left corner, um, it has a little house icon. And if you roll, visit, roll your mouse over it, it says visit site. Let's do that. Hover over the name of your site and then click visit site. That takes you back to what we saw a moment ago, like a regular user. But the difference is also we have the admin bar at the top. This wasn't there a little while ago because we were not logged in as an administrator. Now when I hover over the name of my site, I have dashboard. So this is the back end. This is the dashboard. This is the front end. This is the main site. We have to get used to switching between them. If you're really advanced, you can open them in two windows somehow. That's a really advanced technique right there, if you can figure it out. So the uh, front end dashboard, or the front end and the back end dashboard, we just need to get used to jumping between them. Sometimes in a couple of tabs, you know, going back and forth between a couple of tabs. You can also simply just click on that. That's a clickable thing. That's even faster. Just click on it one time, and wherever you're at, it'll switch you between your modes. Front end, that's what it looks like for people, visitors. Click it again. Back end, that's what it looks like for me, the admin. So it's a simple thing, but it's something I need to point out early on just because we, um, we need to switch between the two modes. There's a lot of stuff that pops up here. Welcome to WordPress. Here's what you should do for the first steps. We'll get to all of these eventually. Um, I'm going to cover two, three things for the moment. Um, let's go over here on the left side. We'll look at every screen eventually, but for the moment, let's go over here, hover your mouse over posts, and go look at all posts. 
if you click sometimes it just goes right away right away where you might not want you have to often hover and then select what you want so hover over posts and go to all posts and there's a message about hello world right there if you hover over that we will see edit click on edit hello world This is this welcome message that you might have seen when you were looking at it in the front end. Welcome to WordPress. This is your first post. Welcome to WordPress. This is your first post. WordPress has two big ideas of content. We'll talk about content in detail, of course. We have um, two types of content. Posts and pages. For the moment, I'll say posts. Um, changeable content, part of the blog. Latest content pushes down older content. Blog is the operative, operative word blog articles. Um, stories or whatever. Maybe you visit websites that there's something new every day. There's a new article, there's a new story, a new picture, whatever. Um, that's often a blog type of website that something new is at the top and it pushes the older stuff down. WordPress calls that type of content or that type of screen a post. It changes. Like right now, there is the first Hello World welcome message if when someone visits your website tomorrow you may have written a new post a new article on whatever your business is remember when we wrote the um, you wrote the review of the of the of the work of art that was a that was a our first little look at blogs and content and such eventually when we flesh out our website even more for our portfolios you're, you're gonna write more content more blog posts but this is one type of content if uh, if we see uh, if we go back over to on the left side posts we also have a screen where's that pages hover over pages and select all pages there's something that says privacy policy and something that says sample page uh, let's hover over and edit sample page. You might also get some pop-ups that say, uh, check out this tip, check out that tip. You can ignore it or close them. This is an example page. It's different from a blog post because it will stay in one place and will show up in your site navigation, like, uh, like on the menu bar. Uh, most people start with an about page. Okay, well that's content still. But it's a little bit of the opposite of what I've got here. It's not changeable content. It's not part of the blog. Um, it doesn't push content away. So this is um, static content, um, part of the nav bar, the navigation menu. You usually have home, about, products, contact. You usually have these screens that never really change. If I want someone to contact me, that contact button is always there. That contact button is a page that doesn't change. Um, the About Us screen or those sorts of screens that don't really change too much, that's what a page would be. This is more evergreen content, easily accessible. Your visitors can find it and get to it pretty easy. It's usually in the menu. So eventually when you make your own websites about your own product or company or portfolio, you're going to want to show, here's my resume, here's my top 10 projects in class, here's contact me. And those I want those to easily be found by prospective employers, I might make them as pages. Whereas maybe like my latest project or my thoughts or writings or images or whatever it could be a post. So we've got posts, we've got pages. 
And ultimately, <clears throat> the design of everything comes from over here. If you hover over Appearance menu, we have Themes. Let's look at this, Appearance and then Themes. Okay, making the note of, making a note over here, the design of our site is controlled by a theme. You can have many installed, but only one active. We can have different designs of our site that we can easily turn on and off or switch them on and off. Um, and whatever content we create still is there. We still have the about screen and the product screen or the portfolio, but we just change the design pretty quickly. We're going to have deep discussions on design eventually because right now it comes with these three basic designs. And this one's called 2019. This is an active. There's another one called 2017 and 2016. When you hover your mouse over some of these, for example, let's hover over 2019, it says theme details. Let's click on theme details. And it tells you this is the default, etc., whatever. It comes from the WordPress team. It's version 1.4. OK, fine. Close that screen. 2017, it's just going to tell you about itself, who created it, whatever. Um, and it gives you a little bit of a preview of what the theme looks like. Um, I want to switch the design. I want to go from 2019 to 2017. Hover over 2017 and select Activate. You hover over there and click Activate. They switch places and you will see now that 2017 is the active one and the whole style of my website now has changed. Well, I don't, I don't see it until I go to the, the front end. Let's go to Visit Site to see how my site changed. Go up to the visit site icon. I get a big picture behind everything, which I want to change, which of course I can change. I get the name of my site right there. I never remember typing just another WordPress site. I want to change that. We'll see that eventually. There's that post again, but now it's in a slightly different design. I've got this sidebar slightly differently. Power, proudly powered by WordPress at the bottom. So my design changed. We'll, of course, go into detail about how to further customize it. Part of it will be under that customized screen that we will look at later. But let's say I want to try out the other theme that they've got there, the 2016. Walk me through it from right here. If I wanted to change the theme to something else from here, what would I do first? I'm in the front end, so how do I get to the back end first? Up on the name of my site. We'll click on Dashboard, although there's a shortcut there. Dashboard. OK, we're in the admin. What's next? How did we get back to that uh, themes screen? Anyone remember? Yes. Appearance, yep. Themes. Now, there was a shortcut, if you noticed. When you put your mouse over that, you could go directly to themes there. That's nice. But if you didn't notice that, you come back here, turn on 2016. Visit the site, go look at it. It looks really boring. Um, I think 2017 out of the built-in ones is kind of the most interesting one. And even the newest one looks really boring unless you really customize it. And then 2016 is just like, you know, it's three years old. So in internet terms, it might as well have been made in the 1800s because um, 2016, you're still using that theme. So I'm going to activate 2016 and then I'm going to go look at it, visit site. Here it is here, again, just kind of boring, black and white. We do have the ability to make a bunch of changes. We can apply our CSS skills and our HTML skills and our JavaScript skills. We can still do that. But the default is that very quickly I made a sidebar, I have a main area. So the great thing about WordPress is you can get started very quickly in making a very professionally designed website, which then I can customize, of course. We won't look at it. We won't look at it yet. But if you go to the customize, you often have the ability to change colors and images and layouts and stuff. We'll do that later. But for the moment, we have three themes that are a little boring. 
if only there was a way to add a brand new theme to our website. We can add a brand new theme to our website. Maybe that huge plus symbol right there? Yeah. Or clicking add new at the top. Let's check this out. Let's go back to appearance themes. Either click on the plus add a new theme or click add a new theme right there. And what happens when you click either of them, they take you over here to the theme directory. People all over the world are creating themes, some of them free, some of them not, for you to easily use on your website. They have all of these different names, Gridzine, Stackable, Transportation. Um, on pretty much all of them, you can hover over, you can get the details, you can get a preview of what might it look like before I install it. So I see one called Gridzine. If you see it, good. If not, that's fine. But I see one called Gridzine. Click preview. It looks something like this. Now, what I do notice a lot of times is that little thumbnail is false advertising. I always see that they make a really cool design in their thumbnail and then even when you preview it, it looks nice but then when you install it it doesn't look exactly the same because they probably picked the perfect pictures and color combinations and such it's sort of like you see you know an amazing hamburger on a commercial and then when you buy it it's all smushed and the meat is falling out right so um, that's the same sort of thing here with these themes that this looks amazing but probably it's amazing because of that amazing photo and you often do not get the photos included because those are copyrighted those are not your photos of your website so don't be surprised you see a cool theme and you still have to work with it a little bit customize it a little bit which we'll cover later but at the top here did you notice I also see these are 15 of the featured themes at the moment. I also have popular. Here it's showing me 4,280 popular themes. And then latest. Here's the latest theme, 7,500 themes. And then I can mark them as favorites, and I can keep referring them to back here under the favorites. But part of the homework will be that you're able to set this up. You're able to set up WordPress, like we did together, and pick a theme. The, the 2017, 2018, 2019 themes are pretty boring. I don't want to see them anymore. I've seen them a long time. I want you to go through the various uh, theme screens here and find one that you like and don't worry about really customizing it perfectly and don't worry about making a full website just yet. We're still far from that. We're learning the various pieces. But the the homework is for Friday uh, for Saturday is to install WordPress pick a cool theme once you pick a cool theme you've got install click install uh, there's also a button to activate actually uh, be careful about that remember you can have multiple themes installed but only one active at a time so after you've installed the theme don't forget to activate it and then when you go visit site and you like it okay great take your screenshot as per my instructions See again there, it looks amazing in the thumbnail, but like where where's where's that supermodel? Like she's back here, but not on the actual you know, that looks cool, but then when I look at mine, it's not complete. Because sometimes you have these other sorts of pieces to fully set it up. So again, don't get too complex. If you can figure it out, great. If not, don't worry about it. But I want to see that you've picked a different theme besides the default. On first glance, to me that still looks like one of the boring ones built in. So if I can't tell right away you chose a different theme, I might not notice. It might not give you full credit. That looks a lot like 2016 to me. So you want to pick some theme that perhaps design-wise or layout-wise is a little bit more unique than the defaults. And there's thousands of them, literally, to choose from. You'll have to take a screenshot to show your website is running. I want to see your web browser the address up there and I want to see a new theme installed on your WordPress you have a lot of these panels to look through and new concepts to learn there's the various readings of this week that you should still go through 
you can explore things on your own as much as you want or do the minimum that I'm asking for this week. You've got the two assignments, the hypothetical midterm questions assignment due by uh, Friday, and then you've got the, the WordPress proof of concept by Saturday. We'll have a little lab time from now until the um, end of the class session, plus lab time afterwards if you need it, if you want to get started. And uh, we'll be back next week in person, but other stuff online will happen. General questions about what we talked about today? All right, so we'll give you some time to work to get it all fixed up. And if you have any questions, let us know. We'll be here until uh, the end of class session.